Well, our next guest is a four-time Olympic gold medalist and five-time world champion diver. At 24, he became the first man in, get this, 56 years to win two gold medals in diving by winning both the platform and springboard events. In 1988, competing against divers half his age, he became the first to win double gold medals for diving in two consecutive Olympics. Woo, the list goes on and on. He has been termed the world's best diver, and this morning we are so lucky to welcome to the show this morning, Greg Luganis. Welcome to The Balancing Act, Greg. It's so good to see you again. It's great to see you again. And can I tell you why we say again? <laughs> I, inter <laughs> I interviewed Greg several years ago when I was a local reporter in Miami. We I went out to the, the Hall of Fame, yeah. right? And yep, yep, Greg yep. tried to get me to jump off the 10-meter springboard. Yeah, come, come on, come Greg. On. Get your suit on. <laughs> we'll go off 10-meter. I'll hold your hand. That's okay. Yeah, I told him I didn't want to get my hair wet, but that's, that, that, that's another story. Um, but, you know, th those were your career accomplishments, and I do want to get into more of that in just a bit, but first, I want to fast forward a little bit here because you are so heavily involved in charity work right now, and I know that you're a human rights advocate. You do tons of public speaking. Talk to me a little bit about your own balancing act and, and how you manage it all. Well, you know, it's it's really incredible. I mean, things that I'm really, really passionate about, um, human rights, equal rights, uh, you know, that is a passion of mine. I, I did a 1.7 mile swim in California. I'm not a swimmer. Oh my God, I'm a diver. You're I, I yeah, do a there great is a dog difference, paddle, yeah. you know? <laughs> and it was like, I, 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 I just volunteered to do the 1.7 mile swim swallowed half the ocean but you know I got through and it was great it was wonderful it was a wonderful experience I love those physical challenges mm -hmm. but it's also for the good cause um, I also have uh, another charity that I'm trying to get off the ground in Charlotte North Carolina Pos the positively pet fund mm -hmm. and to care for animals of people living with HIV because there's so many patients out there, HIV uh, patients out there, who are having to decide whether they're going to spend their money on their medications mm -hmm. because they're so expensive, mm -hmm. and, or if they're going to take care of their animals, feed, you know, get food and vet care for their animals, mm -hmm. and they opt for the for the animals, mm -hmm. you know, because it's all about quality of life. Sure. And so I, I, I want to alleviate that stress from, you know, from as many people as I can. And I want to talk a little bit personally here, if I could, because one of the things that I do know about you is that you always felt like you kind of had to hide the real you from yeah. the public eye. And what I find interesting is that, you know, when I interviewed you years ago, there seemed to be a little bit of a shyness there. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And kind of a little bit of a reserved yeah. nature. And one of the things we joked about is I said, but you know, women loved you. Every time you would say <laughs> Greg Lugan, this woman would be like, woo woo, can you hook me up? Can you introduce me? Yeah. But underneath that all, you were hiding the real you. Yeah. How, difficult it, how difficult was it for you to hide the fact that you were a gay man or that you are a gay well, man and that you didn't want the public to know and why did you feel you had to hide that? You know what I mean it was just such a process Come, the coming out process right. letting go of those secrets I mean it is a process I mean and, and each person has their own journey I mean I was out to a lot of my family my friends people who were really close to me but I mean after 84 I got a lot of media attention and then I got signed on with an agency and and they said well kind of calm down the gay stuff you know, and I was like, oh, okay. So it was my policy not to discuss my sexuality with members of the media. Okay. So it was, you know, then I was like back in the closet again, and it, it, it just didn't didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't in, until 95 when I came out with my book, Breaking the Surface, and Barbara Walters was the one who got uh, the first rights uh, for the interview, and then Oprah called Barbara to see if, you know, she could come and do... Uh, an interview with me and you know I was terrified I was terrified when that book came out because what were you terrified about well I mean I had so many people in that were really really close to me that were concerned about my safety because of my HIV status mm -hmm. because of my hitting my head on the board because of the blood but you know all of those things there was a lot of fear at that time mm -hmm. uh, surrounding HIV so they were very very concerned about about me and I didn't know how people were going to react and I thought people would shun me and you know and all but what I learned is 
honesty begets, begets honesty. How important is it for you now today, Greg, having come out and having kind of felt like, boy, what was I kind of afraid of all this time? What are you telling young people now who may be feeling what you were feeling? Well, you know what? I, we live in a different day and age. I mean, we have much more positive role models that are out there and in, in, in images um, of gay people. You know, it's, it's a little bit more well well rounded. Sure. And so, um, you know, there's uh, uh, not that it's um, accepting, but there's a, a bit more tolerance out there. And so that's really, really encouraging. But also, you know what? I have nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm an open book. So it's just like they can ask any questions. And, and that is so important, especially when you're going through some of the things. Because I went through horrible depression. I mean, you know, numerous suicide attempts. And I mean, that dark place that you get to and you think nobody cares mm -hmm. and nobody's going to miss you mm -hmm. if you're not even there. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I mean, I don't want any child to go through that. Mm, you're going to make me cry. I'm oh. sorry. You know, because I have three boys and you yes. want your children to feel strong and yeah. empowered and not fearful. Right. Do you exactly. know what I mean? Exactly. It's just such an important thing. And I know yeah. now your most recent project, as we continue this evolution of Greg Luganis, yeah. is your involvement with USADiving.org, uh, where you're mentoring children and, and coaches as yeah. well, right? Tell me about that. You know, it's amazing. I mean, I just we just started this year, mm -hmm. and um, I went to the National Training Center in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. I went to Bloomington at um, Indiana University and worked with some of the kids and the coaches, and it has been so incredible because you know what, you know, even with all the accomplishments, I never felt like I had anything to offer. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Isn't that weird? Yeah. And it's just like, and now, I mean, I'm going to these kids and I'm talking and I'm sharing my experiences and, you know, the, the communication back and forth is incredible um, because I'm realizing, gosh, I really do have something and to offer. And you did all along. I know, but I, did, I didn't believe it. Yeah. That's yeah. just it. I yeah. didn't believe it. And now that you're able to give these other children the opportunity to believe it, yeah. I think is a wonderful yeah. thing. And, and I want you to stick around because we do yeah. want to continue this conversation with you. <laughs> okay. Speaking of children and giving yeah, them something to offer, coming up after the break, we'll introduce you to Jordan Wendell. Now, he is 12 years old. He's a really cute boy. He was adopted from Cambodia, and he's already earned a junior national title for diving. Stay with us to learn more about his story and his relationship to Greg. That is coming up after the break, so don't go away. Welcome back, everybody. Before the break, we are chatting with Olympic gold medalist and five-time world champion diver Greg Luganis. Now it's time for you to meet his protege. His name is Jordan Window. At age 12, he already has the title of junior national diver and is training to compete in the 2016 Olympics in Rio, Brazil. Welcome to the show, Jordan. Thank you. Can I first of all just tell you how cute you are? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you hear that all the time. And you know, one of the things I love is that you guys have a lot of similarities, and, and it, it was really destiny that brought you all together. But before we get into that, Jordan, I do want to tell our viewers just a little bit of, about you. You were born in Cambodia, adopted by your now father, Jerry Wendell, when you were 18 months old. Tell me about that. Well, yeah, my dad is um, pretty amazing. He uh, does a lot of sports, and um, whenever I'm sick, he's always there. Mm -hmm. And um, he's never um, left my side except for now since he has to work and can't leave. So it's pretty cool though. So this is the first time that you've been away from your dad? Yeah. Oh, wow. So we're going to take good care of you here. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take good care of you here. Um, now, I know that you were born with intestinal parasites. You needed surgery for a urinary tract infection, and you were orphaned at the age of one. I mean, you have gone through so much in, in your life. And you were adopted, by the way, from the same orphanage um, where Angelina Jolie's son, Maddox, was adopted from. Having gone through all of that and now being here where you are, I mean, what, what goes through your mind? Do you feel like such a lucky, special little yeah, boy? Yeah, it's, it's really cool um, it's like it's it's a special thing I have a feeling mm -hmm. and it, it, I, I just don't know how to explain it mm -hmm. so it's really awesome you have a lot of opportunities now mm -hmm. here huh mm -hmm. yeah with your dads yeah 
Yeah. I, I have to tell you, the other thing I hear is that you were always athletic. <laughs> <laughs> that you've always had that gift for that. And, and, and then one summer you attended a summer camp mm -hmm. for diving and um, you were coached by Tim O'Brien, which is Ron O'Brien's son, who also happened to be Greg's coach. You qualified your first year and made the finals? Yes. Absolutely amazing. So do you feel this is a gift you have? Uh, yeah, my dad repeats it every time whenever we go to a meet and uh, he says I'm always going to do well and he's going to love me whatever happens. So it's I'm having fun either way. Well, I tell you, what a great dad. And it was the summer of 2009, right, when you met Greg Luganis at the Grand Prix diving event here in South Florida. And I understand that, that you were always kind of being compared to him, right? Because they're saying, oh, you've got the same body type as Greg <laughs> Luganis. You've got the same sense of, of timing while you're diving as Greg Luganis. So how did Greg become your mentor? Well, I, I had a Disney Channel uh, for uh, Get Your Head in the Game, and um, I was invited, so I invited Greg to see if he wanted to join me. And um, that's when he started uh, coaching and teaching me all these new things I never learned. Wonderful. Now, you shot that for three days, uh, three minute segments, airs on the Disney Channel between shows. It's interesting. What did you see in Jordan that reminded you of yourself. You know, the thing that impressed me the most, I mean, we, we went out to dinner after we, we met the first time, um, me and his dads, and, uh, and you asked like the most amazing questions. You know, he was like, okay, what do you do when people are talking smack about, about you? you talking know? smack? Yeah, Come talking on. smack <laughs> about you, you know, because they're worried about that. Sure. You know, and all, you know, it was, it was very, very insightful and I was just so impressed. Doing great, and you know, it's interesting, we talk about the similarities. You both were adopted, same coach, both of you are left-handed, right? Mm -hmm. um, body structures are similar, all of this. It, it's very interesting because it almost seems like the cycle in some ways is repeating itself. What would you tell this 12-year-old Jordan that a 12-year-old Greg didn't know? You know, the, the biggest thing is to have fun. Mm. Have fun, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, your dad's been there for so much of that, and you know, he wants to be there, you know, even more, and just you know, have fun with it, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, because that's the most important thing. Because so often you get so ingrained in what you're doing, and then you don't see the outside world. Mm. You know, you just you just see what you see, and that's the pool, and that's what I'm trying to get a lot of our athletes to do is look. Be beyond the pool, you know, to get involved in their community, to get involved in things that are important to them, what their passions are. Mm -hmm. You know, but here's the thing, if you're training for the 2016 Olympics, I mean, that's no easy feat, and that does take a lot of training. You practice five days a week, seven in the morning to four o'clock in the afternoon. You're homeschooled, and you refer to it, what, as a virtual school? Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, um... So, uh, homeschool is like, I have to say your parents teach you, but uh, virtual school is when uh, your teachers are on the computer talking to you with headphones and microphones. And um, you actually, they give you books and you have to look up on the computer and do your information there. Mm -hmm. A little birdie told me, young man, that you want to become the first diver to do a five and a half flips on a 10 meter tower. Now I have to tell you out there, the record is four, <laughs> five and a half. Yeah. Jordan. I wouldn't even know how to coach that. <laughs> I was okay? going to say, how do you, you even begin to? You're going to have to help me with that I mean, one. Why, why is that a goal for you? Why do you want to do that? Um, I just uh, love spinning. It's, um, it's awesome to be in the air, feeling the air blow through your body, and um, just going through the water and having fun with it. Yeah. And I have to tell you, I do think you'll do it. <laughs> I, I absolutely do think you do it. I, I want to touch on this, and you probably have heard us talk about uh, during this interview, your, his, your dads. We use that in plural. And you do have two dads. What is that like? Um, so I, when I was uh, in school, some kids would say it'd be weird to have two dads, and uh, they'll make fun of me. But then I went to um, my dad's, and they said it's, it's not any different with having a mom or a dad. Same thing. Mm -hmm. um, then I thought for a second, and it, it, it made sense. Because mm -hmm. love is love. Yeah. If they love you, that's, that's, that's what's important. Mm -hmm. What keeps you motivated? What makes you strong? Because you seem so wise beyond <laughs> your years. Well, um, I mostly just think about what I'm doing and don't think about anything else, just concentrating and uh, 
uh, knowing that I'm going to do it. No, and no, have no. fun too. Yeah. <laughs> you have a good time out there. I noticed that. Yeah. I wanted to, 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 to end with this, Greg, I, and, and thank you so much, Jordan. You're just such an inspiration. I really appreciate you being here, and you're an inspiration as well, Greg. And so having said that, what would you like to leave our viewers with? This is Greg Luganis in 2011. Oh, my. <laughs> what, what do <laughs> I want to leave, Jordan? everybody? What are you laughing at? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the biggest thing is that um, Really, I mean, Jordan's a testament. You know, love is love. You know, and that's the biggest thing. That's our our biggest lesson. You know, uh, whether it come from a mom and a dad, two dads, two moms, it doesn't matter. Um, and you know, that's the reason why I work so hard for um, you know human rights. Uh, you know, we're all entitled to to love somebody. Mm. Well, thank you both so much for being with us on the show this morning. Jordan, do I get tickets to the 2016 games? Uh, I'll, I'll, mm. I'll work on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got some time to work on it. You should yeah. work on it. Okay. All right, buddy. I appreciate it. And, Greg, it was such a pleasure it to see you again, sweetie. It was great. You thank too. you very much. And for more information on Greg and all the projects that he's involved in, we really want you to check out his website. It's gregluganis.com. And to learn more about Jordan, please visit usadiving.org.